What's up everybody, I'm Mickey Andrade and this is Throttle. Today we're gonna to show you guys how to relocate a battery. You might be thinking, wow, I think Throttle already posted a video like this. Well, you're right, and we did, and we took it down. Because after we published the video, we read through the comments section and some of you guys had very good critiques and criticisms of our first job of doing this. So we wanted to go back and actually provide a video to you guys that was actually substantial and covered all bases, not just our case with this car that is basically a show car. So we're gonna circle back and add to the original content that we created and give you guys a comprehensive how-to. I wanna take a few minutes to show you guys how to do a battery relocation installation. So that means moving your car battery from either the front or the back, wherever it may be from the factory, and putting it in a more ideal location. So a lot of times you can just switch over to a smaller battery like this. This is similar to what a motorcycle would use. The problem is, is it's not very powerful. Um, and they don't last very long, unfortunately. We're gonna step up to also an AGM type battery, but we're gonna go to a bigger model. They carry a lot of power and they're gonna deliver cold caking amps that we need for this car to start whenever we need it. In this case, we're gonna move our battery to the trunk. I'm gonna grab Ricky and we're gonna actually start uh, wiring this up and we're gonna show you guys how to do it. But before we get started, I wanna show you some of the things you'll need to do one of these installs. So obviously, you're gonna need a battery. Um, so whatever you decide for your application, whether it be a stock replacement battery or an upgraded battery such as this, you'll need to pick that up. We just went to our local auto parts store. This is a battery tie down. So basically this is an adjustable bracket that you basically make to your certain width and it goes across the battery to tie it down in place. You need the side mounts, which are these. Now these thread through here and get fastened uh, with the wing nuts on top. And then you need something to anchor these to, whether it be the chassis or in our case, we went and picked up just a small battery box. Oh, that thing's heavy. Um, and this is just a battery tray basically with a bunch of provisions to mount it to the chassis. The other things you'll need are some heavy gauge wire. This is aught gauge wire. You can run four gauge, but we like to go as big as possible when we do these. A, that's what she said. Uh, to make sure that we're sending as much power as possible uh, to the system. We've also got the corresponding ring terminals. So these are also uh, made for aught gauge wire on this end. And then they've got a 5 16 hole at the top. And these will fit directly onto the posts of our battery like that. In order to cut this wiring, because it's so big, you'll need a proper set of tools. These are Klein wiring cutters. And then we also have some crimpers here. These probably won't be needed because we're working with such big gauge wire. Uh, we'll need a larger style crimper for that. In this particular case, we're actually gonna be using this large crimper. So you put this ring terminal inside of here with the wire in place. Uh, essentially, you just hit it with a hammer. Uh, and what that does is it actually crushes this down onto the wire and it'll give a nice secure connection for our wire. And then we can either use a shrink tube or whatever to seal that up. The other thing you'll need, and this is very important, a circuit breaker. And we've got two types of circuit breakers here. This is sort of the standard busman type uh, circuit breaker. This is 150 amp. And we've also got the T-Spec 140 amp circuit breaker here today as well. We're gonna go ahead and, and modify this car to utilize one of these in line with the Ott gauge wiring and our new battery setup. So that should be about it. We did grab some electrical tape and a couple other miscellaneous tools that we may need. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and get to routing these wires and uh, get everything placed and mounted and we'll take you guys along. All right, so to begin, you wanna locate your car battery and you wanna disconnect the positive terminal, the negative terminal and remove the battery from the front. In this case, we had an old AGM motorcycle style battery in the front and we're gonna take that out. I've already removed the cables off of it. So it's an easy removal for us. Um, but this is the type of battery that we used to have in here and the reason for that is because we've added intercooler piping that routes directly where the battery used to be and that's why we're moving the battery to the trunk. 
Let's over to the whiteboard and I want to simplify things for you on that first so you can visually see what it's going to look like when it's all done. Okay guys, here we are at the dry erase board and I just want to go over a quick little layout for you of basically how our vehicle lays out. Now mind you, every vehicle is different and yours may be different than this. However, this is a pretty generalized layout. This would be the front of the car, this would be the rear of the car. So what we've done here just to simplify things is I've actually already drawn in a distribution post because that's the route we're going to go. However, this would normally be where your battery would sit. You would have a positive wire and a negative ground wire to your battery. I've erased the battery out of this equation, drawn in a distribution post. You're now gonna take your positive battery cable, you're gonna lop off whatever OEM fitting was on the end of that, and you're gonna add a terminal. We'll show you those in a minute. Same thing on the negative side. You're gonna have to cut off the battery terminal that's also on the negative side, and make it so that you can chassis ground that. So now that we've addressed the battery and how to cut that out of the equation in the front of the car, you're basically gonna gear up now to route your wiring to the back of the car or inside the car, wherever it is that you're gonna be uh, placing your new battery. In our case, we're placing it in the trunk. So we're gonna route our odd gauge wiring through the firewall, underneath the carpeting, underneath the back seat and out to the rear passenger side corner of the vehicle. If you're trying to decide where to put your battery, a good place to put it is either on the passenger side rear or if you're building a race car or rock crawl or something where you want to put the battery inside the car, uh, you can mount it on the rear seat pan. That's usually a good place and usually the passenger side or the center is a good location for that to distribute the weight properly. All right, so now that you guys sort of understand how the configuration is, Let's talk about getting the odd gauge wire, which is what we're choosing to use. You can use four gauge, anything larger than four gauge and up is usually the way to go. Uh, in our case, it's zero gauge or odd gauge. And uh, odd is just a fancy way of saying zero. So we're using odd gauge, we're running it uh, through the chassis. So basically inside the cockpit, we're gonna slip it underneath the rear seat, looking out for any moving parts, pivots for the rear seat backs or anything like that, keeping it away from that so we don't damage the uh, sheathing on the wiring and then routing it under the interior carpeting in the trunk over to the corner where we're gonna power our circuit breaker, right here. Our circuit breaker is then gonna be wired directly to the battery positive. And what that does is it allows us to only have current flow in a very small area instead of a large current flow up to the front of the car. So if you do have some sort of short in the chassis, it's gonna kill the breaker here and all this will die. So you don't have anything live here that could potentially create a fire. Or whenever you're passing a wire of any type through a metal surface such as your firewall, you always want to use a grommet. In our case, we've got these fancy grommets from Metra. Um, these require a pretty large hole, but we are using OT gauge wiring. And basically what this does is it allows you a weather tight seal at the firewall and something that's not gonna chafe your wiring as it passes through the metal surface. If you're passing the wiring underneath the car, or even in the car for that matter, you can utilize a D-type wiring fastener like this. It has a hole for mounting here. You can use self tappers or uh, fancier if you like. Um, these are plastic versions. They also make metal versions with a rubber uh, isolator on them. Now that we've gone over all of this and we've talked about how to do this safely, let's move on to the car. What I did was I went and picked up a terminal, a stud, um, that's going to mount up here where our battery box used to be, where our battery used to reside. And this is basically an isolated stud terminal. Uh, that we can connect all the wires on. So our battery is gonna bring power to here and it's gonna send power out to all the different components that need the power, the fuse panel, the starter, the alternator, and so forth. What I did was I also got a cap for this. Now these don't come with any type of way to isolate them from any other metal surface that could come in contact. You have to be very careful when you're running positive power to one of these because this becomes a live post. Anything metal that touches this will spark. Um, so I went ahead and picked up a rubber cap that we'll put on here when we're done. That way, if anything falls in the engine bay or tries to touch this, it cannot because of this, and our wires will be coming in from the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this mounted. It looks like it requires two screws. Uh, I'm gonna use, looks like some M5 hardware and get this mounted up. Okay, well, I've gone ahead and mounted our post terminal up here. Basically, I chose this location because it's, aside from the fuse box, it's in a, a small area not a lot of things can fall or touch. Um, because this is gonna be a hot post, um, yes, we're gonna have it covered with a rubber isolator, but you do wanna keep in mind that you wanna keep these kind of out of the way. You don't just wanna put it in the middle where it can be easily touched or um, bumped into. And I went ahead and routed our odd gauge wire up here behind the fuse box um, in a hidden fashion. I'm gonna go ahead and slip this over. Starter wire. Let's 
starter wire and now we have our fuse box power to run that up. Try to keep it as tidy as possible here. Now that we've got our power run underneath the hood, all to our um, distribution stud here, we're gonna go ahead and route the cable through the car, under the carpet, under the trim panels, and out into the trunk. The nice thing is, is on the S14, the rear seat flips down, so I can just send it underneath the seat pad, underneath the flip down seat. You'll wanna keep an eye out for any moving parts. You don't wanna run it too close to the seat pivot or anything like that, because it could wear through the uh, protection on the out gauge wiring. It is a big wire. So you wanna route it in a safe spot underneath the seat uh, and out into the trunk where we're gonna feed it through to the circuit breaker. All right, well, once you've successfully routed your power from your, the front of your car to the back of your car or inside your car, wherever it is that you're moving this battery, for us, it's here in the corner in the back of the trunk area. S14s have a pretty nice trunk and I honestly kind of wanted to put it back under there but from a service standpoint that doesn't really make much sense and I think this car may end up with uh, air suspension at some point so that would be a great place for an air tank. Um, so for now we're going to use this rear corner uh, much like a BMW. We're choosing the passenger side because a lot of times you offset the uh, ballast weight on the passenger side because your weight is in the driver's seat so you're putting that weight over the rear axle on the passenger side. Um, so in our case, we have our battery box here and we are gonna mount it right here. Now, we've peeled this carpet back and we got lucky and actually found three or four bolt holes in the chassis. And these are actually, must be for a factory component that's not being used because they don't do anything. Um, they're just threaded holes, so. And it's got a welded nut on the other side, which is pretty awesome. Which is awesome. So, one cool thing is that our battery tray actually lines up with three of these holes. So what we'll do is we'll get a longer bolt, a nice size washer, and uh, bolt this down in here. But we'll flick the carpet over it first, put some holes in the carpet, put this over top of the carpet, and it'll be a nice install. But before we put our battery in here, we'll run our negative, our ground cable as well. And what Ricky and I decided to do, you want to pick a nice substantial spot on the chassis to, uh, to do that. We're going to go ahead and drill a hole in the chassis here. This is a nice thick unibody metal. And we'll nut and bolt the uh, ground here with our odd gauge wire. I pretty much took the uh, paint primer and gooey stuff out of the chassis so it can be bare metal and you can get uh, good contact with the ground. I think this should be more, more than enough. Let's see how this works. Oh, <laughs> like butter! Man! Man, we've never had it that good before. No, never. Man, Yo. we're spoiled now. Metra! Woo! Metra! <laughs> that was like a freaking... Yeah, dude. I want to do it again. That was yeah. like piece of 10 gauge wire. I want to do it again. Let me, let me see this again. There's no way it's that easy. Oh, man! <laughs> Mantra! Man, Jeez! Where have you been all my life? That's it. I'm buying one. All right, so now we got to put the terminal on. See if I'm able to just take the top cord off strip. without cutting the wire off since this thing is so... And I'm, I'm barely putting any pressure on it. I'm not putting pressure on it. I'm just spinning it. I want to make sure I don't... I think I'm moving what I need. Now we need to measure with the battery in it so that way we can do the other terminal on the other side. All right, so right now we set the uh, battery tray and the battery on top of it. Nothing is bolted down, everything is just sitting there. Why? Because I want to measure where I'm going to cut the wire again. I just took the big spool out so I can have space so I can work in the trunk. So we have the wire pulled all the way up and it's zip tied at the bottom of it. That way I know it's not going to slide down. And I think right here should be a good point to cut it and it still gives me a little bit of slack on it. I'll probably go a little bit more right there and the terminal would be an inch in front of it yeah i'd actually like to maybe route it like this so it's here if this is where you want the terminal then we know the terminal is going to be here and an inch before is what we need to make the cut so we'll make the cut right about here so now that i have the measurement or you can either grab a zip tie or black tape or a sharpie 
to mark it. I know that's gonna be my cut. Boing! She gone. This one. All right, so we'll cut that back. It's pretty short ground. Which is, oh. <laughs> Hey, bud, Oof. take your easy. Oof. What do we got? 5 16 so the nice thing about these grommets is we've got um, 5 16 we've got quarter inch hole, and we've got 3 8 diameter hole on the end. So depending on what your terminal size is or whatever you're bolting to, that's an M8 bolt. Nice, so 5 16 is perfect. perfect. Yeah. So we'll use the one of these box. guys. You gotta want it. Get it. Get it, get it. Now I'm happy. Pull test, we're good. And she's done. Now we get to do the bolt through. We remove the battery again, fold this back, and we actually bolt it down. Ready? Mm -hmm. All right, well we lucked out. That's a great mounting provision for our battery box. Um, you probably won't be as lucky as we are uh, with that. So I suggest uh, just drilling yourself three or four holes or two holes, whatever you think is necessary. Uh, minimum of three on this one, I think for sure. In fact, we might even add another one here because essentially this is carrying the battery weight. Uh, you wanna make sure it's mounted nice and firm like this one is. So uh, yeah, if you don't have these mounting provisions, make your own. Uh, make sure you nut and bolt everything. Don't just use self tappers because they'll probably pull out. <laughs>
So you want to go ahead and use the covers that come with the breaker so that if you're throwing groceries or anything else back here, those two things are not able to contact any metal. One of the other things that uh, we need to do before this is a completed job is we need to put an isolator boot over top of both of these. Uh, we did forget to get these at the auto parts store, but they're you know a couple bucks and you slip them over the, the power cable and it basically covers over both terminals. Again, so you don't touch any metal on um, either of the posts by accident and create a problem. Um, if you did, it would pop your breaker, not an issue, but I'd like to prevent that from happening if possible. Well, that was a successful test. Okay, well, that's good news. We kicked the breaker on and we have the alarm going off. So that means we're getting power from the battery to the equipment in the front. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do a quick multimeter test and make sure we're getting power at all of the locations that we need it at, alternator, uh, distribution point, and all those places. All right, so now that we've got the breaker on, we're gonna go ahead and check to make sure that we've got at least 12 volts here. We're gonna go to our chassis ground and we're gonna go to our positive post. And there we have it. We've got 12.8 volts, which is good. That means we're getting full power here. Everything seems to be working okay. Let's go ahead and try to start the car and then we'll go check the alternator charging. So we know our alternator is charging. If you guys don't have a device like this in your car or vehicle, definitely uh, take your multimeter, check at the distribution and make sure you're getting more than 14 volts or 14 volts. All right guys, we hope you enjoyed this install and this how-to. We hope it was thorough enough for you to do this on your own vehicle in your own garage. Huge shout out to Metro Electronics for all the cool bits that we got to put on this thing and make this a really special install for Courtney. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for the subscriptions. Go ahead and turn those notifications on so when we do another how-to, you find out about it first. And leave us a comment down below. Let us know if there's any other how-tos you guys would like to see us do. We'll see you in the next one.